Now, let's scroll up to the very beginning of this document and just uh, go over it from, from the top this time. I sort of started looking at it from the bottom because I already knew that there will be uh, you know, a dictionary or uh, a glossary of terms or definitions that would help me to understand what's going on. But let's take a look from the top. A system over overview, business goals. Uh, in, 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 again, an investor would most likely be looking at the business goals to say, okay, what is the business value of this? And it, uh, it, it, it tells you there that the customer, customer obviously is the one who will be hosting, who will be saying, okay, I will be the customer of this product. I'd like to buy this product or I'd like to adopt this product, right? And then essentially become responsible for it and I'd like to operate it as well. So they say the customer, the customer wants the system mainly for research purposes. Right? In this case, it could be a university or educational institution that could provide this type of experience, get people engaged, get, pe get people involved in this particular application, and do some research based on what is taking place. The object of the research would be to find out how many communities using mobile devices could be born, evolve, survive, and maybe die. Right? So, and so forth. So you can read the business rules. I'm not going to uh, read off the screen here. But again, it's trying to be formally uh, presenting this. Uh, user groups and uh, another interesting information here. So who are the group of users? Game creators, game masters, administrators, players, and researchers. And they specify how many of these users are expected per game or per system and so forth. Okay, interesting information that kind of gives us a more or less clear idea of what's going on. Uh, functional requirements. Functional requirements are, remember, uh, we started officially with basically business requirements and other parts of it. But the functional requirements truly is the heart of this document and they say what the system can do. What are the actions supported by the system? Interestingly, let, give me, uh, let me give you um, uh, an examples of non-functional requirements. There could also be non-functional requirements, which typically would be part of this document or a separate document. Non-functional requirements are such as what kind of hardware or opera operating system platforms are required, what kind of security is required. Uh, what you know, uh, the type of networking or other uh, infrastructure that is required. So anything that basically, or uh, for for instance, the um, uh, the requirements for the database, the volume of records that is expected to be produced by the system, anything that affects the scalability of the system, the operability of the system overall in its in its entire infrastructure would go into a non-functional requirement description whereas here we're focusing on what the system will do so it's purely functional uh, specification so the functions supported by the system now this uh, particular part of uh, of of the document the heart of this document the functional requirement uh, part of this document is focusing on this diagram. So this diagram is a use case diagram. Use case diagrams typically look like this. There is a pictogram of a user. Officially, UML names them actors. And there's those bubbles with the description of a use case. For example, let's look at the player first. Player is the most obvious, uh, you know, entity in this thing. Like everything is based on the fact that players will join the game and start playing the game. So the player can create a character, join game, leave game, perceive, which will be explained later on, but it's basically the uh, player analysis of the virtual world. 
Uh, they can also modify their character. They can interact with other characters. They can also receive notifications and they also can delete a character. That totally makes sense. Uh, game master, very much like a power player, they're not creating games. They can join the game to start controlling it. Like, uh, you know, they're really the, like an administrator inside the game. So they can join and leave, which is very similar to what the player does, right? They can follow it, essentially watch it, perhaps have access to statistical data that can be accumulated uh, during this uh, playing experience. They can modify the world, right? Maybe they can add other objects, other obstacles. They can, you know, uh, change the weather pattern or whatever. Um, Control NPC, non, remember non-player character is anything that is not driven, a character not driven by the player, but perhaps there are characters that are driven by artificial intelligence, but at the same time, they can also be open to uh, you know, adjustments made by the game master. So game master can basically tweak their, their behavior in cer in certain way. So control NPC and administer the game in other ways. Perhaps if some players misbehave or you know start using obscene language inside the game, they can give them a warning or remove them from the game and such. All right. Uh, so just a quick a quick overview of, of those things. A and interestingly, you may think about uh, use case diagram as sort of like naive and um, sort of like an oversimplified view of, of what is going on. But it's very important in a certain, um, uh, in, in a number of aspects. First of all, typically, it's not all the time, but a lot of times, um, the, uh, the objects on the left versus the objects on the right and actors in specifically are considered to be primary actors and secondary actors so the primary actors oftentimes are recognized uh, such as um, you know entities that have direct effect on what the system is and what is going on in affected state secondary actors could be you know less important uh, type of actors who occasionally work with the system or it could not necessarily be actual users but they could be uh, remote systems other software that may be occasionally connecting to us and uh, you know extracting some data for example so there could be those types of actors also I, I, the, there is a the re, this rectangular form this 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 uh, you know the perimeter that is shown here is really the boundaries of the system so all these bubbles inside this this uh, you know rectangular shape really tells us what are the unique functions of the system and what is you know recognized as specific type of activity taking place inside the system and at the same time it also clearly shows that the player is not part of the system right so the player is an outsider it's an actor who can do things to the system but is not part of the system so the the boundaries of the system are clearly established by this particular diagram so um the, like I said, this is a use case diagram, and the actual use cases are shown inside these bubbles. Okay? Inside those bubbles. In addition to this, the functional requirement doesn't stop just on this particular diagram, which is sort of like a, the most simplistic look, not necessarily simplistic, but simplified look at the system yet it gives us a pretty good idea of what can be done and by who right but the following part actually is describing those use cases in you know exhaustive detail so let's uh, 
save this.